Hey everyone, Southy here. It's been a while again. Crap weather, tracks been closed for upgrades. Um, so my plans this year have pretty much turned to poo. I've had, had the hamster out once for a test and tune, got three runs in. So anyway, um, those frustrations aside, I decided it's time to do something um, that I've been wanting to do for a while may upset a few people a few of the purists will probably get hurt watching this but at the end of the day i don't care it's my car and i'll do what i want with it but uh anyway this is episode one of my fb holden wagon lm7 build a uh, bit of an ordeal with the front end for this thing but apparently it's on its way um so yeah time to get start uh start tearing this thing down so ideally um I've sort of planned, I've had this build planned for a while. Um, originally I was going to do it to the sedan, but at the end of the day, I really love wagons and love our wagon. So um, my wagon is an FB standard, which is kind of a bit rare. They, because they were the poverty pack ones, they usually ended up just in the tip. So there's not, not a great deal of them around. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, it's an FB holding. It's not like I'm ripping apart a HK Monaro or anything like that. So, um, like I said, some purists will probably be a bit butt hurt by it, but at the end of the day, I don't care. So, plan with the build. Um, obviously, I've got an LM7 here. It's a really clean looking engine from uh, Sohem. Um, so it'll be LM7, uh, four speed auto, power steer, air conditioning, and I basically want to build something that I can tow the vintage caravan we're doing. Once that's done, I want to be able to tow the hamster out to the track and I want to be able to use the car itself for drag and drive sort of style events. Um, but it will have creature comfort, comfort so the wife and everyone else can drive it. We can drive it in Queensland summers without melting to the vinyl seats. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it and uh, we'll get stuck into it. We'll start with the teardown so we can get this thing into Tim. All right, let's get at it. probably a bit hard to see but I've got the exhaust out, got the tail shaft out, got the little gearbox cross member. You know it's not really a cross member, it doesn't support the gearbox on a grey motor but the little brace, speedo cables out. I'll start on all the uh, linkages are off. I'll start on the uh, hydraulic, get the uh, slave out, all that off and uh, then uh, move on to the engine side, so just working from the back to the front to get my motivation going. Alright, keep going. Alright, got everything disconnected underneath. Uh, radiator's out, drain the fluid everywhere. It's just sitting there, so pull that out. Something like that. He's getting in the way. Radiator out. 
So yeah, I think we're almost, a few lines are off, all the electrics on this side are off, not that there's many on this thing. Um, starter motor is disconnected, the throttle linkage is disconnected, generator is disconnected, just got this front engine mount to undo. I have to undo the choke, undo the heater, or the temp sender. So yeah, temp sender, choke, engine mount, and then I think we're right to check the tensile strength of anything else I haven't remembered to undo. See how we go. Alright, I think we got everything out. Got the supervisor out here getting her hands dirty and now we see what we have left attached down a um, bit of wrestling around and of course this idiot has a hoist but decides to pull this out on the concrete on jack stand so it's my own fault but it's just too lazy to move all the rest of the shit around to actually get on the hoist but anyway uh, the engine's out well it weren't wasn't too many dramas with it um, it's so it's a fairly standard car it's been obviously been pulled apart um, that I noticed today a few times over its life and it has had a paint job or two over its life so yeah obviously it's been apart a few times so it wasn't too hard to get apart the exhaust was the biggest pain in the ass to get out but um wrestled it out in the end so yeah she's sans engine um and gearbox just yanked it out as one as you could see so it's all out um we've got the rest of the engine bay to sort of strip out um, tomorrow, as well as the interior, engine and gearbox are out. I'll uh, chuck them away for a rainy day. Um, tomorrow, chuck it on an engine stand, chuck the gearbox on the shelf with the rest of the spares, and we'll get back into it tomorrow. Anyway, grab your merch, overtaking lane, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Alright, day to a teardown. So yesterday we got all the drive line taken out of it. <coughs> um, so a few things left to clean up today. Need to strip the rest of the engine bay out and make a start on the interior. So I'm trying to cut this car up as little as possible. Obviously we're going to have to do a bigger transmission tunnel. Uh, but apart from that, um, I'm trying not to cut it up too much. So need to get the carpet and the seats the old heater and everything else out of the way so we can uh so tim can get the tunnel in um so yeah anyway it's been a productive weekend so far let's get into it i'm gonna pull it apart all right so here's where we're at engine and gearbox tail shaft out everything's all radiators out everything's all packaged you know snap lock bagged up and labelled so here um, got the radiator support back in after pulling that out yesterday to get the engine and gearbox out so I've got the steering box brace coil brake and clutch master cylinders you pull the regulator off linkage supports off um, clutch slave basically battery um, just get as much of the stuff out that'll get in Tim's way out of the way. I've got the bonnet back on just so I can get it down there to him. Um, so yeah, not much to do in the engine bay. Interior in this thing has been redone. It's not too bad, but um, I'll need to pull the old Smith's heater. Um, oh, sorry, the warmer rod heater. Smith's temp gauge out. Um, I've already pulled the radio out, which you guys have seen in another video. 
We've got the carpets and that out. The carpets in it are pretty new. Kid seats. Kid seats, back seat, carpet will need to come out. So yeah, that's where we're at. Slowly getting there. I don't think it'll be as big a day today. But um, you know, it's the little things that always end up taking the longest time that catch you out. So we'll get back into it. the stuff uh, off got the throttle linkage and throttle pedal that'll pull out um, this bracket the throttle linkage brackets been a bit of a bitch I need to get in there to give it a good belting with the driver but before I do that I'm gonna just give it a bit of a clean in here it's pretty mank probably should have done that before but yeah apart from that it's pretty much pretty much as far as I'll take it um, for now, until I get it down to Tim's. Anyway, let's clean this up, get that off, get the throttle off, and then do the inside. Alright, the engine bay is pretty much stripped. There's a real battle getting the throttle linkage brackets off. They were in there pretty good, but finally got them off with the impact driver, giving in here a quick degrease. So it's about as far as I go with this. I was gonna pull the wiring harness out, but I'll just leave it there for now. It's no big deal if I have to move it further. And I've left the two-speed wipers in. So yeah, that's all done. I have also uh, started stripping the inside. So got the seats and the carpet and everything else out. And um, pretty stoked with how good the floors are on this thing. Like underneath this car is just it's covered in like tar or something and obviously whenever or whoever bought it back in the day um obviously paid for some sort of rust treatment or it's had some sort of rust treatment job like whatever this goldy stuff is that was on all the floors and yeah underneath it's like you know covered in grease and just years of shit because this car's been registered and on the road all its life but you know, apart from a few little stains where there's obviously been water sitting, the floors in this thing are original and they're absolutely mint. So, a bit of a wire wheel and a um, coat of paint and some more rust treatment. And this thing should be good for another 60 years. Like, it's just unreal the condition that the floors and everything are in. 
Like I have found a little bits of rust here and there underneath it, but overall this is a really good car. So good starting point for what I'm doing. So yeah, anyway, seats are out. I've left the seat belts in. I will um, loosely belt the seats in there so we can see when we get it in and check all the drive line angles. If the tunnel needs to be modified, it'll give us seat clearance because I want to keep the bench. I want to keep it registered as a six seater. Um, so yeah, I'll chuck the seats back in and just do them up finger tight and uh, pull the old heater out, pull the old Smith's temp gauge out and that'll pretty much be it. So try and get this done and have uh, at least half a day to chill out uh, before we get back to work tomorrow. All right, let's get it done. All right, got the heater out. It's a bit of a mess in here. Just trying not to inhale all the bloody insulation and shit. But uh, got the dash out, pulling the taco out. And yeah, you gotta love the old Old twist and tape. Fuck how this thing didn't catch fire. It's a bit of a wonder. It already had obviously gotten pretty hot because the old dome light wiring had melted through. Lucky it didn't set fire to the headlining. So yeah, I think we'll be needing to do a full rewire of the body harness on this thing too. Anyway, keep going. Get this finish getting this heater out. Get the Taco, or the sorry, the Smith's temp sender out and uh, clean up. Keep going. All right, that's it for day two. Inside's gutted. Just got the seats and stuff sitting loosely back in there, so we can see where the tunnel needs to go. Engine gearbox out. Everything's cleaned up. So uh, two weeks time, we'll get it down to Tim at Speed and Custom Automotive. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. One more thing, don't forget to buy your Grey Ghost, where is it, there we are, Grey Ghost merch, art by Ryan Ford, get on it, overtakinglane.com.au, t-shirts, stubby coolers, hoodies, whatever you want, send the guys an email and they'll print it for you, overtakinglane.com.au, cheers guys, time for a beer.